Hi, hello, good morning. So uh, I hope you hear me and you see my slides. So I'm going to to start. So my group has been working on, in trying to understand aging to be able to, to cure diseases of aging. And, and um, we know that uh, there are several molecular causes of, uh, of aging. And one of these causes is the, the shortening of uh, structures that protect our chromosomes that are called telomeres. So when these telomeres um, get too short, this causes other other hallmarks of aging, other causes of aging. So short telomeres would lead to genomic instability, stem cell inability to regenerate tissues, cellular senescence, etc. So we think that tel short telomere shortening is a, is a primary cause of uh, molecular aging of our cells. So we have been uh, interested in understanding the role of telomere shortening as one of the causes, or we think one of the main causes of aging. There is a um, 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 an enzyme that is able to counteract this telomere shortening. This enzyme is called telomerase. Uh, telomerase is present when when we are um, pluri, I mean, totipotent embryos, and and there it resets the telomere length of the new individual. Um, but uh, telomerase is silenced in the majority majority of adult tissues, and and telomere shorten associated to to cell division. So. Uh, anyway, telomerase, uh, we will be able to activate, has the ability to elongate telomeres de novo. So we know that telomere length decreases with aging, and, um, and we think that this, when the telomeres reach a critically short length, this is one of the causes of molecular aging, and one of the causes of why um, our uh, organism loses the ability to regenerate tissues and this leads to disease and, and ultimately it limits the, the lifespan. So um, a proof of that is that there are a number of diseases which are called telomere syndromes. These are individuals that have mutations in this enzyme I mentioned, telomerase, and also in other proteins important for the maintenance of telomeres. And these individuals are going to have uh, a number of diseases associated to, to the loss of uh, the regenerative capacity of tissues, which is caused by these shorter than normal telomeres. Uh, but even in, in normal, um, let's say, wild type individuals for telomerase, it has been shown that um, short telomeres could also uh, be um, um, uh, in, increasing the risk of a number of diseases. So it has been considered a biomarker of molecular aging, and it has a prognostic value for several diseases uh, of aging. We have been, um, um, uh, even before the human disease were discovered, um, we, we, we contributed to understand the role of telomeres in aging by generating mice that lack telomerase. And we could see that this, um, when the telomeres become critically short, this leads to chromosomal aberrations. This impedes the ability of stem cells to mobilize and to regenerate the tissues, and is uh, therefore at the origin of many degenerative pathologies. Also, it's, interested, it's interesting from the point of view of cancer, because cancer cells are able to divide indefinitely, uh, because they can maintain telomeres and they do that by activating telomerase and telomerase is one of the most common alterations in cancer and we show that this is relevant for cancer because these mice that lack telomerase are also cancer resistant but my group has been interested in understanding uh, really uh, the role of telomeres and telomerase in aging uh, not only in mice or humans where it has been shown that telomeres matter but in other species and we published a paper in 2019 in which we measure uh, telomere length in a number of, uh, of species, birds uh, and, and mammals. And, and we saw that the, the initial telomere length of a species does not uh, correlate with longevity. But we saw that the rate of telomere loss, the rate of telomere shortening, which we can calculate by measuring telomeres in individuals of different ages, in different species, this is just an example, uh, we can calculate the rate of telomere shortening for a given species. And we saw that the rate of telomere shortening uh, correlates with longevity. In fact, we could adjust uh, the rate of telomere shortening to, uh, to a power law. And, um, and we could actually, uh, this could predict the longevity of a species just by knowing the rate of telomere shortening. So you can have two species like, uh, for instance, elephants and flamingos. They are very distant in evolution. One is a bird, the other one is a mammal, but they share the same rate of telomere shortening and they also share the same longevity. 
which could be around 70 years. So uh, this uh, factor, the rate of telomere shortening, which is in a way an epigenetic fa factor, is more powerful than genetics to, um, to understand the longevity of these two different species. Um, of course, if we know that telomere shortening and short telomeres are causing a cause of aging, we have been interested in trying to counteract that. I mentioned before that telomerase is an enzyme that is able to elongate telomeres. And um, our idea was to demonstrate whether telomerase, increased expression of telomerase could have an impact in, in aging and longevity. And one of the first experiments we did was to generate mice that have more telomerase than normal. And uh, we could show that these mice had uh, uh, an increased health span and an increased uh, longevity. In this first experiment, we saw an increase of median longevity of 40%. Uh, we did not see increase in, maxim in maximal, uh, maximal lifespan. And we think it's because we had fewer of these mice, because these mice are triple transgenic. It's more difficult to generate them. But I will show you in other experiments that we are able with telomeres to uh, increase not only median, but also maximum lifespan. You can see here that the mice that, that retain longer telomeres with aging, they, they have a, a, a longer survival. So at three years of age, the majority of the wild type mice are already dead, while these mice that have longer telomeres, they still, 40% of them are still alive. And you can see here, just by eye, that the mice that have long telomeres uh, are clearly younger than the normal mice at the same uh, old age, two years of age. So this, of course, is, is doing transgenesis, and we thought about the possibility of developing a, a therapy, an advanced therapy, that would be based in telomerase activation in order to delay aging and delay diseases of aging or to treat diseases of aging. Mm -hmm. And we came up with the idea of using a telomerase gene therapy using adeno-associated viruses. So these viruses are non-integrative. They allow for the expression of a given gene. In this case, in this case would be the telomerase gene uh, in a temporary manner, because these vectors are non-integrative. They are going to express telomerase, and then they will be diluted out. We thought this was an interesting property of these uh, type of vectors, because this would um, uh, impede any potential um, role of telomerase favoring tumor genesis. So this was the initial idea. And these are the vectors that are being used now in many gene therapy with DNA, uh, gene therapy with DNA strategies. Um, of course, you could also use RNA instead of DNA, but we have used these, these vectors, the adeno associated viruses. Um, and we did a first experiment in which we just gave a, a, a single intravenous injection with these vectors with telomerase to either middle age or all mice. And uh, we saw that these mice that had telomeres retain longer telomeres and less DNA damage and telomeres. And then we saw that we could delay not one, but many different diseases of aging with supports that, as in this case, a, a single molecular cause of aging could impact in many different diseases, uh, which is what you would expect from some molecular pathway that is important for aging. And uh, of course, we were very worried about cancer. Cancer, in fact, was delayed. So the mice that received telomerase uh, show uh, less tumors um, um, at a given age. So the tumors appear later. And uh, we didn't see any deleterious effects of telomerase expression because, in fact, these mice live longer. The one-year-old group live about 24% longer, and the two-year-old group, uh, which are very old mice already, live 13% longer. Um, so this um, demonstrates that by activating telomerase, you can delay aging. We uh, use a different way to show the importance of telomeres in aging. In this case, uh, we, uh, my group has been also working in trying to understand the role of telomeres and telomeres in pluripotency. Because I mentioned to you that telomerase is really activated in the, in the blastocyst stage, and this is where it resets telomere length of the new individual. And basically, with these telomeres, uh, this individual has to, has to live. Um, so my group actually um, showed that uh, uh, if you induce pluripotency by using the, the Yamanaka protocol, the so-called induced pluripotent stem cells, uh, we observed that this uh, pluripotency state uh, induces changes in the telomeric chromatin, uh, allowing telomere elongation by telomerase. And when you induce pluripotency, the telomeres become long. But we also found that these telomeres 
in both ES cells and IPS cells actually keep growing if you maintain these cells in the pluripotent CS state. So this allows you to generate pluripotent stem cells that have what we call ultra long or hyper long telomeres. And um, this has allowed us to generate mice that are derived from these ES cells with ultra long telomeres with the idea of generating mice. And when they are born, they are born with longer telomeres than normal. This is what we wanted to do and what we have achieved. So in this case, you, you are looking at 100% chimeras, mice that are derived from these cells uh, with long telomeres. They are born with longer telomeres. And you can see here that the uh, biomarker GFP, that 100% of the cells of these mice are derived from these ES cells with long telomeres. And um, we saw that these mice, for instance, um, 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 have less fat as they age. So, and, and, and they have an improved metabolic uh, performance. So they have uh, less metabolic aging. And you can see this by the glucose tolerance test, different ages, and by the insulin tolerant test. We also uh, show that these mice have retained longer telomeres uh, in, in all different tissues. Um, uh, by looking at the mean telomere intensity, you can see that the mice with hyperlong telomeres have longer telomeres in the skin, in intestine. You can check, uh, look in the paper, so all different tissues have longer telomeres. They have less presence of short telomeres. They have less DNA damage, less damage at the telomeres. And, and actually, these mice live longer. And also, um, these mice show uh, a cancer protection. So by two different ways, uh, we, we have shown that long telomeres uh, allow for an increased longevity and uh, delay aging in mice. And we don't see, we didn't see in any of these cases an increased cancer. In fact, in these mice with hyperlong telomeres, they have uh, uh, cancer resistant, even if we, if we use, try to induce cancer with uh, carcinogenic protocols. So what we have done next is to, to try to, 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 to validate this, this uh, advanced therapy, the telomeric gene therapy, for the treatment of age-related diseases. This, you would expect that telomerase could be uh, having a therapeutic effect if the origin of these diseases is the molecular aging um, uh, triggered by short telomeres. So we have shown that this therapy is effective in, in heart uh, infarct. In mouse models of heart, have heart infarct. We have already published that in 2000, 2014. Also in a plastic anemia associated to short telomeres. We also have published that. And I will focus more in, in pulmonary uh, fibrosis and kidney fibrosis. So pulmonary fibrosis is also a disease of associated with short telomeres. Um, it was found that families that have increased uh, cases of pulmonary fibrosis, they carry mutations in telomerase or some telomere uh, maintenance genes. Uh, and and um, even in the cases that are not uh, associated to telomerase mutation, the sporadic cases, it has been seen that about 50% of sporadic cases of pulmonary fibrosis are associated to shorter telomeres. So this is a, a clear example of a disease that um, that uh, seems to be uh, originated by the presence of short telomeres. So at least uh, a very high percentage of the cases of pulmonary fibrosis. So this led us to study the, the role of short telomeres in this disease. Our model is that short telomeres could be um, synergizing with damage to the lung. Uh, and in particular, we have identified al alveolar type 2 cells as the relevant cell type where uh, telomere dysfunction really triggers the disease. And uh, if you have short telomeres um, in these alveolar epithelial cells, so this impairs the regeneration of the lung. And because the lung cannot regenerate, you have an immune response, fibroblood deposition, and fibrosis. So the current treatments for fibrosis, which are um, to block fibrosis, are not curing any patient. Patients continue to, to die, and the disease continues to progress because you still have the short telomeres that are impairing the ability of stem cells to regenerate. So, that's why we think that this disease could benefit from an advanced therapy uh, that is targeted to, to, to the short telomeres. And this um, therapy would be a telomerase treatment. So uh, in collaboration with AstraZeneca, and we have already this, this paper is in press now in Nature Communications. We have identified which is this relevant cell type. So the only cell type that matters to, to induce fibrosis uh, associated to short telomeres is the alveolar type 2 cells because 
when we induce telomere dysfunction in these cells by deleting one of the telomere binding protein, we have full-blown fibrosis. But this doesn't happen if we delete TLF1 in basal cells, in fibroblasts, or in clara cells. So we have to, to design a telomere gene therapy that targets alveolar type 2 cells in order to, to, to treat this disease. We um, have used a, a mouse model, the telomere deficient mouse, mouse model, with a low dose of a damaging agent to the lung. And this low dose only triggers fibrosis in the presence of short telomeres. But mice that have normal telomeres, they do not develop fibrosis. So within this model is close to the human disease where uh, short telomeres are triggering the disease. Um, but um, individuals with normal telomeres, they are not showing this disease. So uh, and we treat this model with telomeres gene therapy. You can see here the, the results. The, the, the mice diagnosed with fibrosis by CT that we treated with an empty vector, 100% of the mice developed severe fibrosis. You can see the lamp, the, the lamp parenchyma full of these uh, fibrotic uh, uh, masses. And the mice that we had treated with TERT, uh, however, half of them have no fibrosis. And the, the half of them are completely free of fibrosis and the other half only have mild fibrosis, these are small patches of fibrosis. So we think that this shows that telomere gene therapy has a therapeutic effect and at the molecular level, already three weeks after treatment, we see any uh, decreased markers of, um, of uh, DNA damage, like a gamma mice to ax of senescence, apoptosis. So we are somehow correcting the, the molecular um, markers of the disease by correcting uh, the, the short telomeres in, in this model by using telomerase. Uh, we see a rescue. Uh, in this case, we have isolated isolated the alveolar type 2 cells from the land, and we did gene expression analysis, and you can see that these alveolar type 2 cells, they have an increased expression of telomerase, and this leads to a decrease uh, expression of DNA damage response pathways and immune signaling pathways, which are associated with this induction of, of fibrosis. So we think that this shows that a therapy uh, targeting short telomeres, in this case is telomerase uh, gene therapy, is able to rescue everything that has been uh, at the molecular and cellular level uh, associated to, to, to fibrosis. So um, one thing we wanted to see is whether this telomerase treatment for, the, for fibrosis could down the line lead maybe to increase cancer because telomerase could favor cancer. Telomerase is not an oncogene, but it, by maintaining telomeres longer could maybe allow for the growth of, of, um, of uh, tumorigenic cells. And in this, sen in this sense, we developed this, this um, sort of killer experiment, if you want, in which we treat with, um, with telomerase either at the before or at the same time that we activate an oncogene in the lung, which is an, oncogen, an oncogene called KRAS. So KRAS induction leads to lung cancer. And we wanted to see whether um, telomerase treatment in this context, either before the induction of the oncogene or at the same time of the induction of the oncogene was leading to more lung cancer. And, and the answer is telomerase is not leading to more tumors or, or um, more mice with tumors or more tumors per mouse or uh, bigger tumors, um, either in the pretreatment or the uh, simultaneous treatment. So telomerase is not uh, leading to more cancer. It's not, it's not increasing the risk of cancer, even if we activate an oncogene uh, in the tissue where we are expressing telomerase. So uh, which is telling us this together with um, all the experiments that we did before, um, well, we didn't see increased cancer. In fact, we see delayed cancer in the mice treated with telomerase that telomerase doesn't ha seem to have a, a tumorigenic effect. So another um, disease that is in a, an unmet um, uh, disease is, is renal fibrosis. It's similar to the pulmonary fibrosis in the sense that it's characterized by um, activated myofibroblasts, the positions of the cellular matrix and, and a scarring of the of the of the kidney and it's a very prevalent disease as well and uh, we wonder whether short telomeres could also be at the origin of this of this disease and i'm showing you here some data from um, a recent paper from from my lab in this case we also develop a model these are mice that have short telomeres 
and we treat them with a low dose of folic acid. Folic acid is able to lead to kidney uh, dysfunction and fibrosis, but we use a dose of folic acid that doesn't induce fibrosis in wild time mice. But we saw, you can see here by looking at creatinine levels and, uh, and blood urine, um, um, blood urine nitrogen levels, that uh, when we give this low dose to mice with uh, short telomeres, you can see that this leads to kidney dysfunction. So, so it's a model in which only the presence of short telomeres um, leads to, to kidney fibrosis. And uh, so this is also um, by looking at markers of fibrosis, you can see that short telomeres are increasing the amount of activated myofibrillas, of um, collagen deposit and fibrotic markers, uh, both by, in, by um, immunohistochemistry and by looking at the mRNA levels of all these markers. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, this is telling us that, that um, short telomeres are also, are also, seem to be also at the origin of kidney fibrosis, and also that this disease could benefit from from a from a treatment with telomerase telomerase activation and this is the summary of the paper i don't have time to show you all, all the details but we also found something very interesting that is that short telomeres we demonstrate that they lead to to fibrosis or they are of the origin of fibrosis but we also found that in this process there is an activation of a, of a cellular um, um, uh, let's say um, identity uh, um, a process, which is called epithelial to mesenchymal transition, and we find that short telomeres are also triggering changes um, um, uh, in the in the epithelial cells of the of the kidney. Uh, um, uh, let's say changing them to a more mesenchymal phenotype, um, which is favoring fibrosis. And this is interesting because this process, the EMT process, is also at the origin of, of cancer. Um, again, supporting that short telomeres are leading to cancer, and um, in part also by activation of these uh, cellular identity uh, changes, in this case, the epithelial to mesenchymal transition process. So the fact that uh, short Telomeric activation could be therapeutic, uh, could have therapeutic effects for for kidney and pulmonary fibrosis. Has led us to 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 start a new company it's called Telomere, Telomere Therapeutics, and is um, developing this uh, advanced therapy for for humans um, with these diseases. And I will briefly finish by mentioning something about COVID nineteen uh, sequels. Um, it was very interesting for us to, to find that the SARS-CoV-2 virus has been described to preferentially uh, uh, transduce, infect um, the, the alveolar tattoo cells in the lung. And one of the sequels of COVID is lung fibrosis. So there are now many patients of fibrosis and this lung fibrosis that has been induced by a COVID uh, disease. So by the infection uh, with the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And uh, we wonder whether, uh, because we know that uh, 82 cells are very important for the origin of fibrosis associated to short telomeres, we wondered whether short telomeres could be part of the disease. So the, the patients with short telomeres would be more pr prone to develop uh, severe um, or to have fibrosis as a consequence of the disease. And in the middle of the pandemic, our group published a, a, a paper with patients in the field hospital of Madrid. This was, there were no vaccines. So this is uh, persons that had COVID that, you know, did, were, did not see the, the vaccine. So, and we saw that, um, that the individuals with shorter telomeres had a higher severity score of the disease, somehow supporting the short telomeres could be contributing to the severity of the, of the COVID-19 disease. More recently, we have specifically looked at the lung of patients with COVID, and, and you can see that the uh, patients with, with, with COVID have shorter telomeres in the lung, more fibrosis in the lung, and uh, this is uh, seen by a fibrotic marker, and this is another fibrotic marker, and this is the activation of myofibroblast. Uh, we could see that there is a correlation between um, telomere length and the presence of these fibrotic markers. So again, supporting that short telomeres in the lung could contribute to uh, the sequel of COVID-19, which is uh, pulmonary, pulmonary fibrosis. 
And I will finish here, just reminding you that we are focused on telomeres, and we think this is one of the primary causes of aging. And this is the people uh, working in my lab, the team uh, that has been working in, in um, uh, they are working also in other projects, but I, I would like to mention specifically uh, Paula Martinez that has been um, and Sarita uh, Saleswati that have been uh, doing the majority of the work that I've told you during this talk and, and I will finish here. Thank you.